High in Alaska's remote, uninhabited Chugach Mountains, glaciers grind rock to powder. These great masses of ice give birth to the Copper River, home to some of the most flavorful, most nutritious salmon on Earth. Flowing through an unspoiled watershed, this wild river provides ideal habitat for salmon that are the world's richest in heart-healthy omega-3 oils. This is the best. Throughout the season, biologists from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game regulate the commercial, sports, and subsistence harvests so that a sufficient number of salmon are allowed to migrate to the headwaters of the Copper River to spawn. Accomplished using modern fishery management techniques, such as in-river sonar counters and aerial surveys, this escapement guarantees that Copper River salmon are a renewable and sustainable resource. The long, torturous swim up the copper is one of the world's most strenuous salmon migrations. It's a journey that can only be accomplished by an extraordinary creature. Uh, the Copper River is about 286 miles from the mouth to the headwaters. Uh, the Copper River Glacier is pretty much the headwaters of the Copper River, and then there's multiple tributaries feeding into it. So these fish have a pretty long journey ahead of them, and they have a very high oil content. And, uh, that just makes them a delicious salmon. It's well known in sort of the physiology of those fish that they have a long haul up the river, so therefore they're loaded with oil, flavorful oil, that good omega-3 oil. So when you get a hold of a Copper River Red or King, you've got something that really is built for the long haul. It needs a lot of fuel to go up river, and that translates into a lot of flavor. They're the first fish in Alaska that are harvested. And so it's like, uh, I don't know, your mouth is watering by spring. These salmon are perfectly adapted for their harsh environment, and they're in premium condition on the Copper River Flats, where the river meets the sea. See how green that back is? That's about brand new. He hit about a minute ago. They're ocean bright. They're switching gears for that long trip upriver where they don't feed, and they just are conserving every bit of flavor and oil that they've got. These wild fish acquire their formidable strength by consuming natural foods at sea. Reds eat a lot of uh, what we call krill plankton, crab larvae. They also eat small minnows, algae, things like that. Uh, king salmon, they're high-level predators. Uh, herring, caplin, hooligan. They love shrimp. That's what gives them part of their color. This is wild Alaska, rugged, remote and bountiful. Throughout the summer, glaciers topple huge chunks of ice into the Copper River. Snow melt pours down the flanks of the mountains, adding more pure water to the cascading flow. With a current of up to 10 miles per hour, the churning Copper River sends tons of silt, rock and ice downstream. It's a glacial river system, so it's characterized you know, by silt. But when you start breaking off in the tribs where the fish are spawning, it's just crystal clear. That's how we assess some of our escapement. We fly over you know, low altitude aerial surveys, 100, 300 feet, you know, traveling 65 miles per hour, you can still look down and see the fish. That's how clear that water is. Dense populations of fish and wildlife thrive in the healthy habitat that abounds the length and breadth of the Copper River. This fully intact watershed sustains a vibrant ecosystem. In general, here we have probably one of the most healthy and intact habitats left on the planet. The Copper River Basin is 24,000 square miles. It's a very intact uh, system, very sparse population. And uh, we are blessed with pristine habitat. The delta at the mouth is an immense 700,000 acre wetland maze. Year after year, hundreds of thousands of salmon traverse these dangerous waters, where they've been commercially harvested for more than a century. Our catch records go back to 1889. And this fishery hopefully will be around for another 120 years or so. It's a model for salmon management. It's been managed for sustainability since before statehood. We have achieved some of the highest harvest levels in the last 10 years in the history of this fishery and we've also achieved some of the highest escapement goals in the history of this fishery within the last 10, 15 years. Uh, 
Uh, my first season here, uh, we shut down this fishery for 17 days to achieve escapement. Of course, you know, these folks are here to make their livelihood. In the end, five years from now, when those brood stop, their progeny is returning, they'll be fishing. Okay, let's haul her in and see what we end up with. Yeah, we have to always talk to Lady Luck. Give her a little, give the first fish a little kiss on the nose. Many of these fishermen work alone. For others, fishing the Copper River Flats is a family affair. You know, it's something me and my wife and my two little boys do. You know, it's a little bumpy today. But when it gets calm, they come out and they help me. And uh, my wife, she started fishing in, in and around the Copper River five years before I did, so it's uh, kind of a touchy subject of her expertise. She's actually a better fisherman than I am. I love eating these things. <laughs> I'm my favorite customer and one of my best customers. We go through a lot of them. I love them. They're delicious fish and they have the ability to uh, to be harvested without any con really environmental concerns from my perspective. They are renewable resource. That's the best part about it. It's my favorite food. I can eat salmon five days a week, twice a day, and never get tired. This is good work. You're making food. I mean, how much more honorable could you have a job? You know, you're feeding people. And it's good food, really, really good food. The future is now, the future is every year, making sure that the escapement gets up the river, that the market is there, that the market's served, that we're doing the right things, keeping it up to the top standards that we know we've, we've already set the pace on. River fish are caught over an extended time period. They're caught in smaller amounts, but mostly it's the fish. Fish go a long way. They're very high in oil content. They're, well, I don't know, they're just better for tasting fish than any fish I've eaten any place else. After we catch the fish in 50 degree water, they go into my ice, then I take them over to the tender within six or eight hours at the most, and then they, uh, they fly down to Seattle in their own little airplane. I mean, they're, they're taken care of. And it's easy for many of us, because we're, we're the best fans of this fish, and the way I like to see it done is you take care of the fish like you're gonna eat it yourself. This is my fish. I caught it on the flats, and I wanna be the one that gets to see you eat it. I wanna come hang by your grill, and. Have you say, wow, I love Copper River fish. It's an incredible product, and it's American made. I love it. Make sure it's wild. Make sure that it's from Alaska. Copper River salmon, Alaska's finest. Wild, natural, delicious. Sustainably harvested by family fishermen. Go to the next base, Rose. Go to the next base over there. Wait for Rose, okay? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 